everyone and welcome back to this session where we have two uh, interesting talks. Um, to start with, I'd like to welcome Drs. Igor Miladinovich and Sigrid schieffer Wenzel uh, from the uh, University of uh, Applied Sciences at Vienna. Uh, they're going to be talking to us today about integrating academic and non-academic online courses uh, from a university perspective. Um, so I'm going to, going to hand over now to our speakers. If you have any questions, please put them into the chat. Thank you and welcome. Thank you, Imogen, for this introduction. Hello to everyone. So my name is Igor Miladinovic, and uh, uh, together with Sigrid Shepa Wenzel, I will present uh, uh, an experiment of us uh, uh, to, today. Uh, we are both uh, with the University of Applied Sciences Campus Vienna in Austria. Uh, this is this is our university. What you see now, or behind me, or behind Sigrid, this is the same building, and we have uh, a different parts of this university. We are both working in the department for engineering, uh, and or uh, our uh, theme is computer science. This is the agenda of. Uh, our presentation. First, we will make a short introduction about uh, the, the, the situation we, we were faced and uh, then about our solution. Uh, it was an integration of a commercial course into an academic course, which is a quite unusual mix. And uh, we will also explain what uh, was necessary to, to make it work and uh, what we have learned out of it. The, the situation was, as we already know, um, a little bit more than one year ago in March 2020, uh, everything was closed. It was this uh, uh, global pandemic and uh, uh, we had to switch from an in-person uh, in-person in uh, work at our university to a distance work because our university is the fully fully uh, in-person university so we have uh, a very very little part which 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 was distance learning and to date is uh, almost 100 percent and this change uh, we had to uh, implement this change within one week was not no time for preparation it was uh, not possible to not, no one ex actually expected that uh, uh, this will be necessary so for our course we have uh, um, looked for possible solutions at the end we decided to integrate a commercial course into our course and to use um, material from this commercial course, meaning uh, a video material, selected uh, content of this course, and to combine this course with some other methods we usually use in this course and some new methods. And uh, uh, at the end, it worked uh, very well. And the, the methods we have uh, used are virtual coaching, peer teaching and learning diaries. And the complete course was a kind of uh, mobile learning course. So the main challenge was, or, or, or wish was, to, to at least to keep the same quality as the year before, so not to lose quality, and to, to switch from in-person teaching to uh, distance or online teaching. This was the our challenge. And... Uh, the solution we also we considered several solutions and this is the one which uh, uh, which uh, uh, has won at the end uh, we, we decided to to use existing course and to it integrated it in our course which making a non-academic course in so uh, let's say capable of uh, 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 teaching in an uh, academic environment. So basically, commercial online courses. We already um, visited some of these courses also before uh, 2020. And uh, our experience was that uh, they can be really very good, well understandable video material, 
uh, very very um, easy to follow, easy to understand. Uh, didact uh, didactics are usually in a good course also also excellent. The content is up to date, and uh, the scalability is of course huge. You do not need any you do not need any rooms. And uh, it is possible to learn uh, asynchronous, meaning uh, um, there, there were no fixed times where you have to attend uh, this course. You can, you can consume material uh, whenever you have, you have a, a time. But uh, we have also identified some weaknesses of commercial online courses. For example, examinations are are very difficult. Is, there are some solutions with the specialized uh, uh, cameras to do some examinations, but it's not uh, um, it's it's not as natural, not as, as easy as uh, uh, in in person examinations. And this is also the problem with the certificates. Can be the problem with the certificates of these courses. The second uh, issue is the motivation of the participant. In our case, participants are the students. And um, uh, it, it can be difficult to motivate uh, uh, the students to attend to this course, because if it's not, uh, uh, if it's optional to attend the, the lessons, then it can be postponed from today uh, to tomorrow, from tomorrow to the day after tomorrow, and so on. The next point is content selection. Uh, if the students are not familiar with the topic at all, it's very difficult to select uh, relevant topics or relevant content. And uh, commercial courses can also be very expensive, especially for, for uh, st students' budgets. So we decided to... Um, to consider these weaknesses and to consider whether it's possible to mitigate them or to eliminate them. And our way was, uh, our answer was yes. And uh, uh, first we have found a course which is uh, uh, free of charge and uh, we selected uh, the relevant contents, the relevant for our course. And uh, we integrated in our mobile learning course, this commercial course, and we supported this by different methods, as I mentioned before, learning diaries, virtual coaching, and peer teaching, in order to keep students motivated, to keep them active, to, to give them um, some tasks which, need, which uh, needs to be completed until the next uh, week, and to, to keep uh, um, a kind of the tracking of the progress of students. And now I would like to hand over to Sigrid, uh, who will explain you in more detail uh, what we did, more about this experiment and also what we have learned out of it. So our course was a mobile learning based course, which basically means that we decided to use learning material uh, and also designed learning material for ourselves that uh, is optimized for mobile devices such as smartphones or tablets. Um, we already have experience with this kind of teaching, so mobile learning uh, concepts, and we also decided to use mobile learning for this course. So all the learning material we used for this course is mobile learning suitable, mobile learning uh, adapted. Um, in computer science education, at least in Austria, mobile learning is still a very new topic. So we don't uh, see such um, lectures uh, in Austria very often. And uh, however, we have uh, already uh, very um, good experiences, made very good experiences with this kind of uh, educational tools. Um, we have the problem that our programming courses um, face uh, uh, 
Oh, we, we have several problems with, with uh, programming courses at our university, which basically are that we have high dropout rates, low satisfaction of students, and uh, a limited um, self-reliance of students in the area of programming. And we already tried several uh, didactic concepts to improve these uh, key factors. And we also have to mention that the acceptance of a new teaching method, such as mobile learning, depends on the selection of the proper tools. And we have selected several tools that help us to integrate mobile learning into our course and also to, over, uh, to integrate this non-academic course into our academic course. One um, very important tool which we used in our course uh, our learning diaries uh, learning diaries offer a tool to support structure and consolidate the learning progress of students in distance learning phases um, it has several advantages for students and also for the lecturers um, basically it's a tool that should improve self-reflection of students, self-organization. It's also a kind of communication tool between the lecturers and the students. Um, students can uh, answer certain questions which we provided to them. They can also integrate emotional information, um, their opinions and attitudes, and they can, what is the most important um, uh, function of learning diaries, uh, reflect self-reflect um, on the learning progress. And we extensively used learning diaries for this course as the students had to, um, had to use, uh, had to do a lot of learning uh, by their own, on their own. As here we have several um, benefits we have identified uh, uh, concerning learning diaries. Um, especially um, the major benefits for students we have identified is that the learning diaries help them to systematically and critically observe and evaluate their own learning progress and it helps them to plan and organize the learning process. And for lecturers, uh, learning diaries really provide valuable insights into the different learning processes of the students, which are very diverse. Uh, at least in our programming courses. Um, we also um, uh, have learned that there are several critical success factors, such as providing timely feedback. So the students enter their uh, diary entries into the system and they uh, also uh, answer questions such as how um, 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 how they, um, which problems they had and how they um, come along with the course and, and so on. And we had to provide timely feedback in order for students to stay motivated to uh, use this tool, the learning diary tool. And um, what we also found very important is that we inform students of the benefits of such a kind of self-regulated learning. So students were informed um, what was the purpose, um, our purpose for using this kind of tool. Um, we used um, mobile learning in the, um, for students to be able to um, get introduced into the topics. So they had a lot of self-studies material such as the sh short videos from the non-commercial course we integrated. They also had warm-up exercises and uh, they had to implement a software project. Um, all the things they uh, had to learn in self-study via mobile learning based content were re reflected in learning diaries. So they had certain questions they answered in learning diaries uh, and they also could enter their own questions which we then offered uh, them to discuss in class and we had in class sessions which were online so online uh, 
virtual sessions where we clarified these questions that the students um, uh, pointed out in the learning diaries. And we also did exercises online where we deepened the knowledge. We provided also examples and uh, we provided coaching for the software projects. Okay. Um, besides learning diaries, we also provided virtual coaching as I already mentioned. So we had regular online meetings where, this, where we answered the, the questions that the student, students provided in advance. And uh, we provided these answers in plenum. So all students um, were able to attend these virtual coaching sessions. And we also provided individual coaching sessions on demand. Um, also peer teaching was a didactic tool we um, applied in this course. So we had several students, uh, this is always the case in the programming courses, we always have a mix of students that are already very good programmers and students that uh, have difficulties in this area or still starters. And we extensively used um, this peer teaching tool where students, advanced students supported the other students and this worked very well in this course. We also had a forum uh, in Moodle where students um, yeah, discussed the, their problems with the software project. And we had a peer review of the software projects that were handed in at the end of the semester and also a peer review of the seminar papers they had to write. Altogether, we have several lessons learned from this ad hoc change of our mobile learning course. Um, so we integrated this commercial online courses into our uh, usually on-site uh, course. Um, and this, we decided to do this because we had to, we didn't have enough video-based content. And um, in our case, this worked very well because the commercial online course we, we, we selected provided up-to-date video-based content on the topics we um, otherwise would have teached in person. Um, the main advantage of this um, course of this um, idea was that we had a great flexibility. We also could add new videos from other courses or we also uh, could um, adapt the course content very quickly. Um, we um, tried to um, compensate the drawbacks of the commercial online courses, such as um, motivation problems, um, for example, with a combination of several tools, such as learning diaries, peer teaching, virtual online sessions, and uh, all material was, as I mentioned before, mobile learning based, so uh, suitable for mobile learning devices. It was also very important to provide timely feedback from the lecturers and also from the peers. Okay, we are now at the end of the presentation and we are glad to answer your questions. Thank you both very much. I can see there are a couple of questions um, in the chat. Um, so the first one um, from, from Trevor Loughlin. Uh, did, you, did you find more students trying to reach out to you synch synchronously when you were doing asynchronous delivery? Not really, not really, because the delivery was not uh, asynchronous only. We also have synchronous sessions, and in this session, they uh, they, they were able to, to to talk with us. So it was almost no difference uh, compared to to the last year. Okay, and um, a second second question from Trevor um, about learning diaries. He's asking, uh, were, were they graded? What format did they take? Blog posts, discussion posts, etc. Private, public, audio, written. Okay, Sigrid, would you like to answer it? Yes. So these learning diaries were graded. We, um, 
um, we had a, a few um, points they could uh, get for each learning diary entry. And um, yeah, um, it was in the form of um, Moodle um, submissions. So it was not a forum or blog post um, and it was private. So only we could read the entries of the students as some of them really entered very emotional information because they had problems with this self learning or with the change of the situation of the pandemic. And they also entered this kind of information into the learning diary. Very interesting. Uh, and then a final question, in-class sessions, were they synchronous video? Yeah, I, I see the questions. Uh, actually, uh, we had no in-class sessions at all, but uh, we, what we called synchronous, it's, uh, they, they, they was actually Zoom sessions where they need to participate, they need to be there. And uh, we combine these kind of uh, uh, synchronous se sessions with uh, uh, asynchronous sessions. So it was almost uh, um, uh, every week a Zoom session uh, where we were able to, to talk with the students. Great. And I think there's just uh, one, one we've, we've got time, yes. One further question, did you, did you have non-graded optional participation components for your course? If so, how often did students complete these parts? Actually not, all the components uh, were graded in the course. But the, our experience is that the grading should not be the main motivation. But if it's uh, graded, even if uh, if you are just giving uh, a couple of points for that, the the response of the students is higher. Fantastic. Well, we, we've still had a few moments. A, a question from me about the mobility of the course. So, so how do you, did you track how your students were typically accessing the course? Sort of what sort of devices um, and what times when they were doing their asynchronous learning? Okay, can you please repeat, repeat the question? Oh, sorry, yes. Um, now, I was interested in how um, students were accessing the asynchronous elements. So what, what, what sort of devices? Did you, did you track what they were using? Were they laptops or, or was it okay. all iPads or phones? Or how, how did that work? Okay, okay, thank you. Sigrid, would you like to answer this question? Yes, please. Um, so we used mobile devices as the primary learning medium. So they, our course actually is mobile app development. So they, in our course, they learn how to program apps. And we okay. also used apps, so mobile devices, uh, where they could um, use the contents. And with mobile devices, we mean smartphones and tablets. And uh, we selected uh, videos and other learning materials which they can easily consume on so smaller displays. Okay, so they could access from any any type of device. Great. Um, well, I don't think there are any any further questions. I think we have all of the questions there. So so thank you both uh, very much for your talk. Okay, thank you too, Imogen. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.